Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. No. 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 Yeah! <laughs> Greetings and salutations. Welcome to Street Smart Swing. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire! <laughs> and I am super related to be scrutinizing another swing dance video for you today. But first, make sure you subscribe and headbutt that notification button so you never miss a swing dance reaction video ever again. Today, it looks like we are going to an event called O-Town Showdown. I like how that rhymes. This is going to be a Strictly Finals. For those of you that do not know what a Strictly Finals is, this simply means a Jack and Jill format where a lead and a follow gets together. They're going to improvise a little bit and also do some choreography. It's my favorite format for competitions and I can't wait to get into it. Do not let your hearts be troubled. I will be telling you the absolute truth about who I feel are the winners of this competition. So if you are someone who gets triggered by the truth, this is not the place for you. All right, let's get right down to business. Uh, I'm not even sure where this event is. It's located. O Town. This could be like Ohio Town. This could be like Oakland Town. I don't know. I'm old school. Whenever I hear O Town, I think of MC Hammer. He's got a song where he always used to say, Yo, O Town! Uh, let's see if I see any familiar faces. That's the first thing I like to recognize. Uh, and I don't see any so far. It's a little dark on the footage so I can't see too much uh, right now okay let me kind of show you who's standing out to me right now let's uh, take a look um, let's see Okay, uh, one of the ones that's standing out to me uh, is this couple. She's got a yellow shirt with like a flower dress. He's got a like brown hat on. Uh, they're right here in the front, and I'm really, I'm really liking them so far. I'm gonna keep an eye out on that couple. Uh, I'm also noticing there's a couple. The girl, she's got a green dress on, like a lime green, like really, really green. And the leader, can't tell who he is. It's a little too dark. He's got a Nice suit on. Love that. When the leaders wear those suits and everybody gets dressed up in competitions, it helps. It really does help with the overall feeling. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> All right. Let's get into this. Oh. Okay, they get their own spotlight. Yes. I really like how smooth this couple's connection is. It, it feels really, really polished, and I can kind of see things leading up and where they're going to go. It looks soft. Yes, yes, I like it. Hey! Stylistically, I like that couple the best so far. Uh, let's see what goes on. That was cool. That was really cool.
There we go. Oh, okay. I do know that's uh, this guy's really good. His name is Farouk. I can't recognize her, but I like I liked them when it was slow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. I liked the energy level of that couple. That was pretty cool. I wonder if they coordinated their outfits because that shirt matches like her dress. That's awesome. This is really interesting so far. Everybody can dance, and I'm having to judge them now on those little things that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. This is getting more difficult to judge. <laughs> he barely made it. He got up there. He, he pushed his partner up there and she nailed it. Yes! <clears throat> oh, it's so dark, I can't tell who. I think I know this follower, but I'm not sure.
Yes! talk about this one. There we go. The O stands for Ottawa, Canada. That's right. Let's talk. That was good, guys. That was really fun and fresh. The energy level was up there, and I really liked the band. It's something about when that clarinet is playing, uh, maybe because I'm learning the clarinet right now. Uh, I haven't picked it up yet, but I got one, and I still, my next door neighbor is a clarinet player. How weird is that? And, uh, so I, I still need to go over there and, and learn some lessons from her. So it's kind of one of my favorite instruments right now. And I got to tell you, the band was really crushing it when it came to the solos and the rhythm section. I enjoyed it. It was tight. I didn't feel like they were, you know, behind the dancers. And I didn't feel like the dancers were really not lifting the, the music up to a higher level visually. I think everybody did that. That was really, really cool. And what I also liked about this particular Strictly is that not everybody was on the same level in terms of comfort level doing some of the classic traditional shapes. And that makes it really interesting as a judge because you don't know really what people are going to pull out. Some of them are more comfortable doing a lot of different moves. Some of them are more comfortable doing some basic moves and then adding in their unique choreography. And so it, it makes it difficult to judge because... Everything that they were doing clearly looked like it was under control. Even though I can't just say, hey, you didn't do all the moves everybody else did. Maybe that's what they plan to do is stay in their lane and do the part that they're good at. So I got to judge them for that. And clearly you guys know by now what I like to judge on first is the most objective part of swing dancing. And that little part is what we call control. And for me, it represents about 25% of the overall dance. That part is so important because it is the the foundation that allows us all to keep our own personal styles and personalities and still be able to dance with other people. This is the physics part of Lindy Hop. And so when I look at that, I want to see control. Can I see the leader do the leader role and the follower do the follower role and then both not fight each other? Because typically when you, when you see it going wrong, something looks disjointed. Uh, it looks unintentional. It, it looks like one person is just holding another person's hand and the other person's not doing anything. So you really can't see the distribution of energy from one side of the body to the other side of the body. The way I look at it is it's two bodies. They come together, they're sharing energy at different points. And so when, you, when I can see that transfer of energy, it, it looks good. So therefore I have to go into the realm of subjectivity. And you got to be open about that, be open and honest, because 75% of it is all about what we like, what we don't like, um, and maybe some specific preferences that we have. And I'm going to talk about those preferences that I like that you might actually like too. So the second thing that I look for is the timing. I want to see how well you can use this technique to make your movements fit the loudest points in the music so that if a person never heard of swing dancing, they could appreciate what they're hearing and appreciate what they're seeing because of the dancer. That's a long sentence, but basically I want to see some musicality. I want to see some timing that elevates the music, not the other way around where you've got a great cool move and it's not placed in a point where I get an emotional reaction because what I hear and what I see matches. Sometimes that doesn't happen and therefore I have to mark it lower. And so let me first start off by saying I had, <laughs> I had two people in third place. And the first person, the first couple I had in third place, I had to switch them to fourth place because one of the other couples went above and beyond. And so my, my third place goes to the couple. Uh, they were the only ones to do the aerials. They were the only ones to do aerials. And I got to tell you right now, yeah, he was wearing, yeah, they were both wearing like maroon shirts and black pants. This was really cool because they came out doing some basic swing dance, swing out moves, um, some just some basic classic movements that we can identify and go, yeah, I know that move. But then what I liked is they did some syncopations with their footwork that I know were choreographed. That's that strictly element that I like. 
is that sometimes you put in certain choreography inside of the context of social dance and it's okay. I like that. And so their choreography did not seem like it was too much. It did not seem like it was too much at all. What I also liked is that they nailed their aerials. It's one thing to have timing and uh, do some movement with your partner in the perfect spot in the music, but there's levels of difficulty that trump that. And for me, when they did the aerials, it officially put them in third place for me. Because the other couple, they had some great timing, all they did, and I liked them so much, but they, the difficulty level of what they were doing um, wasn't as difficult as this couple. And so I have to give my third place to this couple. I will also tell you my second place was interesting because <clears throat> I kind of vacillated between this couple and another couple. And I got to say, my second place goes to, uh, 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 there they go, there they go, there they go, there they go, there they go. Okay, this couple, uh, she had a yellow shirt on with the flower dress and he has like a green shirt on with the hat. The word that comes to mind is raw. What I liked about their movement, it was just, it was tight. It was unexpected. It was raw. It was gritty. It wasn't super uh, long, elongated movements. Everything seemed short and abrupt. What I liked about this couple's movement is that, of course, they had the timing like everybody else. But I could see distinction and personality, and it didn't seem as homogenous as some of the other dancers. They, they stood out to me. And that's important, is if, if you've got the control part and you've got the timing part, there's some elements of the timing that are just, it's about preference. And I liked their timing. I did. I liked their timing. It wasn't too formulaic. Um, I could see that what they were doing sometimes... It seemed like they were about to get disconnected and then they got connected again at the last second. That's good. That means they're taking risk and that's more in line for me with how the musicians are playing than us like doing choreography on top of it. So if I ever have to choose between the choreography and someone not doing choreography, I'm always going to choose with the person who's not doing choreography. For me, that's more in line with the spirit of jazz, which is Yes, the rhythm section has a basic foundation. They know what's going to happen. But those soloists sometimes, they just work within parameters and they fill in the blanks as they go along. And I think when dancers are able to do that, for me, that's elevated dancing. And they crushed it. They were almost my first place couple. Almost. So in my first place couple, this is interesting. This couple, they had the same characteristics of the second place couple. They had the rawness. But I think the, for me, the energy level was a bit higher and I believe that they were taking a little bit more risk in certain ways. They were doing some movements that were just irregular, just irregular movements, the weird movements. And I love that because it tells me that their brain is in a place where they're, they're saying, I have something to say. I'm trying to do something different. I'm exploding with emotion and I'm just letting it come out. And it's not just I'm being too calculated, too safe. To present to you this perfect picture, right? I want raw emotion. I want to feel something. Now I can tell you um, some of the artistic choices I didn't even like personally, and that's okay. That's great, but I can still stay within the context of how I judge a person when I'm dancing uh, because I felt an emotion. They had clearly the control. They can move together. They also had the timing on certain moves. But they also had some stylistic moves that were just a bit irregular. And I didn't see as many people trying some of the different movements as they were. I saw a lot of hand-to-hand -hand Charleston. I saw a lot of people playing it safe, doing the same movements. And many of them could do it well. They could still dance. Everybody was great dancing. But sometimes being able to dance and get those three elements to work together so that the audience feels a reaction is hard to do. It's hard to do. So that's my first place couple, folks. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, some of those movements that I did not expect. That's the kind of stuff I look for in Lindy Hop. And uh, I liked it. I liked it. What did you guys think about this competition at O-Town Showdown? I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really enjoyed the band. I can't tell who it is fully. But it'd be nice if I could get the name of the band, especially if I think that might be Gordon Webster. I'm not sure. 
But it's always nice when I can learn about the bands because for me, that's where it all starts is music. And if they, they've got clean and, and just tight music for me to dance to, I'm super excited because I can't dance if the music's just okay. You know what I mean? Sometimes when you go to events, <laughs> this is just the way it is. Sometimes you have a band and you pay all this money and then you expect it to be awesome. And sometimes it just kind of falls apart. And the band might be, unfortunately, like the weakest link of what's happening. And your DJs all of a sudden have a tremendous amount of value because you know they're going to play some music from the original generation of artists that our modern musicians can't touch. And sometimes I'm happier with an incredible DJ set with music I know is going to be legit. Even if they play rare cuts I haven't heard, I'm going to feel something. Because the way those musicians played back then uh, outweighs the emotional way that people play now, in my opinion. And sometimes I will take a, a great, I'll take an event with all DJs. If the, if the DJs are better than the band, I am just as happy. I'm happier, in fact, because I know uh, my expectations weren't let down, right? So when music is good, guys, support the musicians. I'm telling you, they put a lot of work and effort into making this music for us to dance to. And it's incredibly uh, empowering when you can have an emotional reaction to music that uh, people have put their time into. So uh, let me know if this is not Gordon Webster's band and someone else's band because I definitely want to buy their music. So if you guys haven't done this before, this is what we call it, a Lindy Hop. This is one of my favorite styles of dancing. I've danced so many different styles of dancing for the last 30 years. And by far, this is the best because you can do this with like regular people. You can do this on a high level as, as a competitor uh, and anything in between. But that's what makes it so special is that this is one of America's first social dances. And, and most people don't know that. And that's, that's unfortunate, but it's definitely something that you're missing out on if you're not doing. I have uh, one of these courses you can take below. It's called the Fundamentals Membership. It will basically show you what I've deconstructed to, to make Lindy Hop simple. I spent over 10,000 plus hours trying to help a brand new person understand how simple this can be. And I kept testing my theories and plotting different points just to, just to get it down to its bare bones and studs so that any person can learn what's necessary and what's really kind of a matter of preference and still feel empowered to be able to fix themselves once they understand the premise and foundation of how we approach it. So check out that Fundamentals membership if you guys are interested in that. If you are like me and you like new ideas and you are inspired by watching other people's cool creations, I encourage you to check out some of my free courses below. I've got about 20 to 30 different free classes so you can get experience of what it's like uh, being a part of our Street Smart Swing community. We've been an online community now for about two years and we're growing and super excited. Uh, I'm super excited and it's, and it's really empowering to be able to have a home studio and people who are waiting to get new content every single week. So we're po posting new moves, new ways to do the, the technique and manipulate it to really inspire you. This is what it's all about, is you being empowered to go out there and make your individual mark on Lindy Hop. And don't let anybody tell you your mark doesn't matter. Everybody is absolutely significant. So stay inspired and get plugged in. Uh, outside of that, if I don't get a chance to see some of your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you guys in one of my classes online. Take care.